everybody welcome back to another chess openings video in this video I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to play the fried liver attack if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel and like this video I know it's been a while since my last up upload but that's because I had a lot of school stuff going on and a lot of other things in my life but starting this year I'm gonna try to upload at least once a week so without any further ado let's get right into it Fried liver attack starts after the moves, pawn to e4, pawn to e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4, bishop to c, or sorry, knight to f6, knight to g5, pawn to d5, e takes d5, and knight takes d5. After this, there's a knight sack on f7, and after queen to f3 check, forking the king, and the knight, the most common reply is simply to just to move the king back to e8, after which white could just play bishop takes d5, and the game goes on. However, the fried liver attack starts after the move king to e6, and in this position, um, it's it might be kind of hard to know what to do next, but white's objective is pretty much just to pile up on the knight on d5, which is pinned to the king on e6. So, the first step in doing that is just adding another attacker with knight to c3. After this, black has three main options. One of them is knight to b4, one of them is knight to d4, and one of them is knight to e7. So, I'm going to be going over all three of these, and I'm going to be telling you what to do in each case. So, first let's go over knight to b4. By doing this, black is threatening to capture on c c2, Forking the king and the rook. After this, I suggest that you simply just move your bishop back, protecting c2 and threatening a3, after which you can capture the knight. Then, after moves to just pawn to c6, protecting the knight, and in, and in anticipation of a3, you simply just play a3 after they move knight to a6. Then you strike in the center, because black's king is kind of stuck in the center defending this knight. So, you can exploit that by playing d4 to open up the center just a bit more. After e takes d4, you just take the knight, knight takes d5. Uh, now they have a couple options, but their best option is just to recapture the pawn. And after a move such as bishop to f4, mate is coming soon for for black. For example, if they play a random move such as h6, then all you have to do is simply just castle. And as you can see, already you're threatening moves such as rook, either rook to e8 and like checkmate is soon to follow. So for example, let's say they play a move such as bishop to d6 to try to trade off this powerful dark square bishop. Well, this simply isn't going to work because of queen takes d5, king to d7, queen takes d6, king to e8, and simply queen to g6, checkmate. Or, that's not checkmate, but it's about to be king to d7, and queen to f7 is checkmate. So, as you can see, this is just one way in which white can completely obliterate the open black king in the center. Even if they don't play a move such as uh, bishop to d6, or like an obvious blunder such as bishop to d6, uh, they're probably going to lose material. For example, if they play queen to d7, you simply play rook a to e1 check, king to f6, and a move such as, let's say, bishop takes d5. Or you don't even have to play bishop to d5, bishop takes d5, but that's just one example. Now you're threatening all sorts of discoveries with checkmate threats, so black, it's very hard for black to play. There's also ideas such as rook to e6 in, in the air, so it's pretty much impossible for black to defend this. Okay, so now we've gone over why knight to b5, b4 doesn't work, or what to do against it. Well, they have another very good option, which is knight to e7. Just adding another defender to the d5 knight and preparing pawn to c6 to completely solidify that extra piece. Well, after this, just like before, you play pawn to d4 to bust open the center. 
let's just give you an example of what happens if they take. Well, if they do take, which is actually the best move recommended by the engine, you simply play knight takes d5, and after they recapture, you just play queen to e5 check. After this, you are pretty much guaranteed back your piece. If they try something like king to d6, this simply isn't going to work because of queen takes d5 and you get back your piece, but mate is also soon to follow. After queen, or sorry, after king to e7, bishop to g5, king to e8, and queen to f7 is checkmate. So, as you can see, after this check, they have to move their king, let's say to king to f6, you could just take the pawn, and after they move back, and you just repeat with queen to e5, e4 check, and after this you have a couple options, you could, you could just recapture the knight and be up a pawn with a completely destroying position, but you could even continue the attack with a move like h4, simply threatening bishop to g5. After this, they, they pretty much have to play h6 to block the bishop, and then you could just recapture. As you can see in this position, the black king is stuck on f6, and white has ideas such as possibly rook to h3 to f3, or just, you know, developing the bishop, castling queenside, and bringing the rooks into the game that way. So, as you can see in this position, black is completely undeveloped with both of his rooks, both of his bishops and his queen still in their starting square, whereas white has a powerful attack on the black king while still being up a pawn. Okay, so now we know why knight to e7 doesn't work. Well, what about the tricky, sorry, uh, knight to d4? Well, after this, it might be tempting to play something like queen takes d5. However, the best move is actually bishop takes d5 check. Not exchanging the queens, but rather keeping them on the board. After moves such as king to d4, or sorry, king to d6, you simply play queen to g3, getting out of the way. Them capturing on c2 isn't really a threat. This is because if they play a move such as knight takes c2, you simply just move your king. And if they take your rook, well then, this is just completely losing for black. The reason for this is pawn to d4. That's the entire idea behind actually playing queen to g3, because now this pawn is also pinned to the king. And there isn't really any way that they can protect this pawn. For example, if they play something like, let's say, queen to e8 to protect the pawn, you simply play rook to e1, adding another attacker to that pawn. If they play something, well, in this position, they can't really even defend the pawn. So let's say they play a move such as, let's just say h3, just some random move. After this, simply rook takes e5, and the black queen is pretty much lost. Not only is it under attack right now, but if it ever moves, then first of all, there's many mate threats. But also, to add on to that, there can always be discoveries to just, uh, discover check and grab the queen but in this position there's actually a mate after knight to b5 king to d7 and just queen to h3 is just checkmate so as you can see this king to e6 move isn't really the best idea for black at all okay so now you might be wondering well after e takes d5 all the way at the beginning they don't really have to take back and go into the fried liver, but they could play the much more popular and much more solid move, knight to a5. Well, in this case, I'm about to cover this video, this uh, line in my next video, which will be coming out soon. Other than that, I really hope you enjoyed this video and this line of knight takes d5 and what to do um, when they play it. In the next video, I'll be covering knight to a5 after e takes d4 and tell you what to do in that case as well and why white is winning in that case as well. So yeah, other than that, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please uh, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And yeah, see you next time and a happy new year to everyone out there. Bye.